Hi right, everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very, very much for hanging out with us. We are those people who believe the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator are good for all time. They are good from the beginning of your morning till the night time and all throughout the night. They are things that we need to apply to our lives. They are things we need to apply to our beings. And they are blessings. Guys, the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator breed blessings. It brings greatness for Yah. When we are Yah's people and we are in covenant with Yah and we are doing his bidding, we are his people and that is bringing glory to Yah. And this is what this is all about. We have a creator. His strength is out of control. There's, there's no way we can even understand the power of our creator. But we know that our creator is righteous. We know he's holy. We know that he does not like evil. We know that he does not like sin, and he, he is, tells us this, and he tells us we need to keep these laws, statutes, and commands for all time. And so that's what we are doing, and we are going through the book of Mark, and we are a very war-strung family, and we are dealing with dogs right here, like always, and um, as we sort our dogs and sort our war business out, we will continue on. So, um, I don't know if I need to pause this, or these guys are being psychopaths or what. But it looks like it. All right, so let us get over here. Nicole is e escorting a dog out of the out of the room. Um, so Nicole is the bouncer. She just rolled a dog out, and now we're getting life under control. All right, so here we go, um, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing good. And we still have more dogs. We're still dealing with dogs. Okay. Um, so we are not going to restart because this is kind of our life, and we would probably be restarting quite frequently. I have no idea what these guys are going off on. But we are um, trying to deal with it. So we are in month eight. It is, what are we guys, the 11th? It's 11th day of this month on our creator's calendar. It is the sixth day of the month on the Gregorian Babylonian calendar. And it is a first day. Now, first day would mean that you are going to a Sunday church. And a Sunday church is not a place where our creator exists. He does not exist in a man-made building that is not ordained by him that people are going to, that they're paying money to. And, and if it was a Sabbath, they were paying money on a Sabbath and they're doing a whole bunch of other stuff and they should not be doing. And so here we are. And um, gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. How's everything? Good, yeah. Good. How's, how's, what are you, you guys have been, you guys are obviously 20 years old. You've been through a tremendous amount of wars with your parents. Um, I would have not to with our parents, but like on the side of our parents. Yes, yes, not warring with the parents. Mm -hmm. Although you guys do war with the parents sometimes. It's not does to that the go, extent of war. I does would it go say. to? Does it go well when you war with your parents? No, it's always losing battles. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been through a lot of these battles. Yesterday during Shabbat, we had some people that attacked us during Shabbat, and um, it, it was a very unrestful Shabbat, and we are still dealing with dogs. Hold on. All right, so sorry about that, guys. We just about had an incident, and we had to take care of that, and it is all calm now. Now, back to the wars that we have. What is your guys's? What's your thoughts on yesterday's Sabbath attack on us? Um, under the circumstances that it's under, it just seems very evil. It seems very concealing, very like exposing. It. it, it does seem a little exposing. There's a lot of a lot of things and how there's a uh, information that goes out and instantly the first thing you do is try and take it down. Like you cannot take any form of criticism. You can't take any form of anything whatsoever. And the first thing you do is you try and hide it for whatever reason. Right. Well, yeah, and I mean it's it's very interesting. So I mean they 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 told us in an email that they were going to take down our channel and they were going to take down our our website and they can very well do that in the United States of America. It's very interesting. Um, what do you guys? I mean, what where do you where do you guys where do you guys think we should go with this? I mean, what do you what's your what's your thoughts? I mean, we have a chance to give out the word for free, right? That is that's the motto is to give out the word for free. That is what it says in their scriptures. It says it's and free. If if poor people can't get this in certain areas, like right, we can't ship it down to where we live. It's going to cost hundred dollars to ship two Bibles down uh, for that size. It's going to cost a lot. But if you get it to a digital copy, you could be saving a life. When Yah goes, hey, I gave you the opportunity to give away a Bible and save people's lives. Why didn't you do it? And you say, I need to turn a profit on it. What's he going to say to you? I mean, this is like this, you, there's a fine line between making a business off Yah's name and actually doing Yah's work. I, I agree. You got anything, Jade? Um, I just think that the righteous will prevail. 
and that whatever y'all want done will happen. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, that is it. And so we are um, we are always at war here, and it is sometimes very um, stressful. Sometimes it feels not so great. And um, but I guess that is what it is. And so I guess we're. Uh, I guess once you guys read Maccabees and you guys uh, see that all the stuff that they went through in Maccabees, um, then you guys will know. I mean, they, they people actually got cut up. They got flayed alive. They got uh, and they did it all because they would not eat swine and they did it and they were the people all loved it the people were all um on the side of those guys and they became heroes because they sacrificed their life for the word of yah and so we will do that we will always do that and um yeah yah has picked his people for a particular reason and um yah does not raise up those who are incompetent he raises up those who are able to do their mission and until I get any kind of direction at all from Yah, the direction that we are going to go is that we are going to provide the Hallelujah Scriptures for free to everybody that is out there. And so um, yeah, and they have a, they have a trademark against their their writings on their book, but uh, we can still say it. I mean, it would be crazy if they tried to strike us for saying Hallelujah, right? Because um, that's is what we're doing. We're saying Hallelujah. And so here we go. Um, let's get into Mark 5 and let's get to this reading before we have more events that come and get us. Okay. And they came to the other side of the sea, to the county, to the country of Gargadarenes. And when he came out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces and no one, no one was able to bind him. Okay. So what do we know of this right now? So we- He was uh, really strong. Yeah. He was really strong. He was hanging out in the tombs, hanging out in the graveyard. Yeah. He's hanging out in the graveyard. Um, and you know, what, what do we, um, I mean, what, what can we make of this? Uh, it's a demon. He's always uh, got a demon that is... Supernatural powers. Like, giving him supernatural powers, it causes him to hang on the graveyard. Obviously, where the dead lie, something that demons like is, like, their theme is, like, dead and death and things of that sort, so... Well, yeah, and I guess it goes under the thing of if you cut yourself or if you have a... If you have a um, feeling like you need to cut yourself, is it a demon? Could it be a demon? I, I think, think so. so. I mean, because Yah is not going to go, you should cut yourself. What about hurting yourself? What about punching yourself? What about, is that a demon? Yeah, yeah. it's probably a self. You shouldn't be hurting yourself. You are a temple of Yah. You should not be destroying your own temple by hurting yourself. Is it possible form. it's not a demon? It's just frustrations that people are into and they don't know how to wield that? Or is it unclean spirits? I don't know. Yeah, don't it, know. it depends. Like, is like... It's like a one-time thing, like you beat yourself up one time because something happened, you're frustrated, or you consistently just cutting yourself to cut yourself. Yeah, to hurt yourself. Okay, all right, let's 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 continue on. It's raining, guys, so it's a little loud on our roof. And um, again, um, guys, check out our other channels too because I have no idea how long this is actually going to be here. We are, we are probably on death's door on this channel because of the wars that we are doing, and that's fine. If they want to take out this channel, they're, they're able to, but just make sure you guys have notes of where we are. Okay, verse 5. And continually, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. And seeing Yahushua from a distance, he ran and bowed down to him. And having called out with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with you, Yahushua, Ben of the Most High El? Swear to Elohim not to torture me. Okay, so this demon just asked our Messiah, Yahushua, not to torture him. What do you make of that? Uh... He probably was going to send him away. I mean, there's. I think Yahushua had a power to send him to somewhere like where they can't be with people anymore. They can't be around their own people. I think he has like a certain place for demons to go, or hmm. something of that sort. And he's like, I think, because like where we saw that Legion would take this dude and he threw him into the pigs. Like they wanted to be with all their friends. I think solitude for them is torture. Solitude, walking I without think, a I host. Think, I think uh, solitude or being like without their demon friends is just like torture them because I mean they're lonely. They hmm. have nowhere to go. They have nowhere resting places. We've heard. Right. Okay, okay, um, verse 8. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he was asking him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, because we are many. And he begged him very much that he would not send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was there, feeding near the mountains. 
And all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the pigs so that we enter into them. Okay, so we know now demons can infest, infest people. We know that they are aware of people. We know that the demons can talk. We know that they are able to transfer themselves or at least go into other hosts easily. So there's some things that, uh, some interesting stuff. So they want to go to the pigs. And we talked about that before and none of us had an answer. Why did they want to go to the pigs? And the only thing I think that we figured out is that they could murder all the pigs on the way out and cause all that great chaos. Just another thing that they're killing. Okay. And he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. They were about 2,000. And the herd rushed down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So I've talked to you guys about this before, but this is good talking here. Are we talking 2,000 demons? Or are we talking one demon is able to go into multiple pigs? I think or he had legion that was he had like... a lot of demons in him. That's, that could be very scary. I don't know if a demon can like have two people at once. I don't know how that works. Well, a demon can have... Well, I don't know if they can have two people. We know one demon... Multiple demons can have one person. Yeah, we know multiple demons have one person, but I don't know if one demon by himself can take, like, say, two humans and then afflict them both like that. See, you could probably, with whatever it was, if you get into a herd of something, like, it would only take, like, a few of them stampeding and the rest of them would stampede as yeah, well. Yeah, a herd. They're all going to go together, right? Yeah. One, one animal usually leads the rest, and you can get in, even the leader animal it's going to go with the rest of them. Yep. Okay. Um, and he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. They were about 2,000, and the herd rushed down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. And those, who fed the pigs and those who fed the pigs fled and reported it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what had taken place. So they came to Yahushua and said, and saw the demon-possessed one, him who had the legion, sitting and dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. So they couldn't keep clothes on this dude either? No, yeah, they, they couldn't keep, and I just, uh, I gotta keep going up here. Sorry, guys. Um, and they were afraid. And those who saw it related to them what was done to the demon-possessed one and about the pigs. And they began to plead with him to leave their borders. And as he was entering into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. That's all, I mean, that's like his, his like daddy now, right? The only dude that could dude, save him. Yeah. Take me with you. Don't Probably let these demons... Probably the only dude that could, like, in case this happened again, the only dude that could save him possibly again. Yeah, and this guy's been tormented for I, whoever long with all of these demons, and he's just ridden with the demons. And this, you know, again, this is worthy of discussion of what motivates people, right? Where is the motivation at? If, a, if these guys can... If a demon can have you punch yourself cut yourself, um, do things of that nature, what else are they able to do to you, right? So there's a, there's a lot of things. We need to be very cautious. We need to understand these things and we need to be able to defend ourselves. 19, and Yahushua did not allow him, but said to him, go home to your friends and report to them what the Adon has done for you and how he had compassion on you. And he left and began to proclaim in Deca, Decapolis all that Yahushua had done for him and all marveled. And when Yahushua had passed over again by boat to the other side, a large crowd assembled to him and he was by the sea. And see, one of the rulers of the congregation came, Yair by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him strongly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of her of death. Come, lay your hands on her to heal her and shall she shall live. And he went with him and a large crowd was following him and they were thronging him. And a certain woman had a, blood fl had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered much from many physicians and spent all that she had and was no better, but rather became worse. Having heard about Yahushua, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only touch his garments, I shall me be made well. Now, we know from other translations, it's not just the garments. What did she reach up and touch? She touched his easy. I think why that's not stated here that it's easy, I think it would be really good if uh, people knew that. Like in all the books, they all read all the books, but here's the thing you have to understand is that Azizis were common. Everyone wore Azizis back then. Yeah. So he, they just reached the garment. That was just a part of your garment. That was just a normal thing. It's just like a belt. You could reach up and grab the belt, right? It's a normal thing that normal people wear. So what color of Zizi do you suppose Messiah Yahushua had? Blue. Blue. You don't think he did the Jewish white stuff? No, oh, that's probably a, that's probably why they're like this dude's not one of us. They they knew they knew this dude from the beginning was not one of them because he was not having their zizits on. By the way, the NIV broke. The NIV broke is it over. 
it's over. Yeah, just this tablet's gone to the dark side. Okay, we'll have to read it without that. Okay, having heard about Yahushua, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only touch his garments, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And immediately Yahushua, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his Talmudian said to him, you see the crowd is thronging you. You say, who touched me? And he was looking around to see her who did this. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done to her, came and fell down before him and spoke to him all the truth. And he said to her, daughter, your belief has healed you. Go in peace and be relieved from your affliction. And it, at, as he was speaking, they came from the ruler of the congregation. Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But having heard the word that was spoken, Yahushua said to the ruler of the congregation, do not be afraid, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Kepha and Yaakov and Yochanan, the brother of Yaakov. So they came to the house of the ruler of the congregation and much weeping and lamenting. See, this is where we see that these three again are like, the closest to Yahushua in a certain ma matter here and anything. He always only, when there's something, like he wants to show him, he only showed these three between, like he had the closest relationship to these three. Every time something amazing happened, he only brought these three around. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what the relationship was with these guys, but they were all very, very close. I feel like these ones, because they gave their good job, it doesn't talk about the other ones, what they did. They might have had, they might not have been around all the time, like these three were. Could be, could be. Okay, um, so they came to the house of the ruler of the congregation, saw a commotion and much weeping and lamenting. And coming in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child has not died, but is sleeping. And they were laughing at him. And when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who, who were with him and went in where the child was lying. And taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kume, which is translated little girl, I say to you, Arise. And immediately the girl rose up and was walking, for she was 12 years old, and they were completely astonished. But he ordered them many times that no one should know it, and said that she should be given to eat. So she might have like been really hungry? Uh, she, yeah, she was sick. And when you're sick, you don't eat, right? And so when you're well, when you get better, you actually start eating. But when you're sick, you most of the time you do not want to eat. All right, so what do we what do we make of this? We we've heard these stories before, but I want to keep them interesting enough that you know um, we, we see here that the only reason anybody was healed or survived or lived is because of their faith. If they didn't believe, they would have never been healed. The lady, if she didn't believe that she could touch it and grab and be healed, she wouldn't have done it. She was like, maybe I can be saved. You know, if I maybe I touch it, I'll be healed. But she said, if I touch it, I will be healed. She knew. She believed. Yeah, very 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 good point. I it's, think with the uh, second thing, the second story here is that. Uh, where he's like, don't tell anyone. I think people would have known that she's back alive. I mean, he was walking with all the crowd, and they were like, she's dead, don't don't trouble him. And he's like, hold on, she's sleeping, they all laughed at him, and then she came back to life. I think there'd be a lot of uh, people turning their heads to figure out what just happened. Well, yeah, it, they, they would be astonished. I mean, in this day and age, we don't hear of anyone coming back to life. Um, it's quite the opposite. And so when we see something like this, and they had never seen stuff like this, right? And even in the back of the day, the physicians of that day were... were completely unskilled uh, I guess it's very rare when you saw someone come back to life like uh, Elisha he brought the one kid back to life yeah um, Lazarus Lazarus, Lazarus made right. it back um, yeah before Yehoshua there wasn't really anybody coming back from the dead yeah and so this is all new stuff so our Messiah is able to raise the dead he's able to compose himself and contain himself when he's being attacked he is able to turn the other cheek he's able to show us things that we should be doing in our lives this is one of the main reasons that we should be, when, if you are say that you are a follower of Messiah Yahushua, or Jesus the Christ, as you say, but you don't keep the law, statutes, and commands, then you're not a follower, because Messiah Yahushua kept the law, statutes, and commands of his father, and um, so I guess if we want to represent, if we want to be like Messiah Yahushua, then we should begin by keeping the law, statutes, and commands of our creator, and so it is very important. All right, anyone else have anything else? Um, um, read your Bibles. We will see you guys in the next one, and hopefully this channel will be around tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully this channel will be around tomorrow. Please check out the other channels, guys. Make sure you check out yahuwahandthetorah.net. 
at any point when we are gone, that is where we will be, and we will be there until the end. And we thank you guys very, very much for being a part of our family. We love you all very, very, very much. May Yah bless you guys. May he keep you. May his light shine upon you. May his favor always be with you. And may you find grace. And may you find the faith of Messiah Yahushua. And have a wonderful day, everyone. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.